this is what happens when we have too much time to get ready. What is happening? Am I actually on right now? Yes. Oh, hi. <laughs> okay. Sorry. My goodness. Don't mind me. Don't look at this. Everybody turn away right now. Okay. You weren't okay. Down the camera, so. We're good. So, uh, what are we doing tonight? We are making bread. Now, we've made plenty of bread on this shelf, but there's a difference about this. I have for a number of years, more, that's he more than it's healthy for a man to be doing, um, have tried to perfect the, a sandwich bread that tastes good, but also has the texture of something that I want in a bread, which is to have good structure, but to also be nice and firm and soft. It's not a thing you can have. two things. You can't be a little bit absolute. I have to check your grammar there. Uh, anyways, uh, so no, for, uh, soft and has some structure to it. So when you, bread, when you butter it or you put peanut butter or jelly on it, it doesn't fall apart like Wonder Bread or cheap store bread. And I believe, sorry, I've got really aggressive leaning in there, but I believe that I've found it. And we have been making it, I, make, I made at least a loaf a week um, for the past, what, couple months now. And it is, we'll get into it, but this is one of the most versatile bread recipes that I've come around. And so I started, I, this is my recipe. This is the first time in history that this is my recipe. Now it is based off a number of different things that I've learned from different recipes, but this is mine. That's insane, I made something. So two things that we want to do, talk about with bread. Um, first of all, we need to talk ingredients. Flour is important, but why do we? What flour do we need? We need bread flour because it has the higher protein content. It's going to help with the gluten development we're looking for. Um, it's going to have that means that you're going to have a nice chewy bite, and it's going to be structured. It's going to look better. It's going to be good. So, the other thing that we're doing is this is sort of a riff on a brioche and a milk bread, kind of married. That's how you get such good things. So a couple of things that you're going to need specialty items. I, don't, I wouldn't call them specialty items, but you're going to need them. You're going to need instant non-fried mil dry milk. You can get this at any supermarket in the world. You just go down to like the baking good aisle and you get it. Um, this is going to add a good richness and flavor to the bread without upping the hydration. Because if we add more milk, we add more hydration, and the dough is going to be pretty sticky anyways. It's going to have good structure, but it's going to be it's going to be much more. Um, this is just going to be much more flavorful this way. Okay. So the other thing that you're going to need is you can find this. You can find it like a Sprouts or a Whole Foods. You can sometimes find it. This is finely ground potato flour. I think you can find that more and more places because you, of people with celiac. And you can. I was just gonna say that too. So, the, the, the potato flour. Now, if you can't find potato flour and you've got some Idahoan potato buds, which we love around this place, you can actually substitute for it. All the, th that's all this is. You just like, this is finally, them through a, like a spice grinder or something? That's what I would do. So this is just that. So I use a tablespoon of this to help with moisture retention. Hi, Neil. So, <laughs> that's Neil. <laughs> he is definitely a bread consumer. So what we're doing is that, you know, that, so that's kind of the specialty two things that we need. We need whole milk and a couple of eggs, instant yeast, and Bob's your uncle. The other thing you're going to need is uh, unsalted uh, butter because that's going to be, that's sort of where the brioche side of this is going to come in. So let's just get moving. Um, you're going to need three cups of, like I said, bread flour. Now what I'm doing is I'm not, I know I probably should weigh everything and I'll probably get around to that and play, play with it, but I'm just flattening and leveling. And I'm going right into the bowl. Oh, We're gonna jump around a little bit here. So forget as we make, make our way through this, because uh, I don't know if you know this, but when you make bread and you have various steps, you have to make bread for each one of those steps. So at the end of tonight, five loaves of bread will be made. <laughs> 
So that is, that's a lot of bread. So what we got, we got a quarter cup of our instant non uh, dry melt. And I'm doing this in this because we do have a lot of things that are in various steps that we need to keep up on. So that goes in there. That's a quarter of a cup. And then, oh, and sugar. I have sugar over there. Sorry, you need tablespoons of sugar. But really, you know, only, like I said, that's what it looks like. I don't know if you can, that's just powder, potatoes. It's, again, it, it helps, it's gonna help with the moisture retention that we need. And that's- That's really all that that is? It's just potatoes. Yeah. It's kind of crazy, right? Um, oh, I should say thanks. So uh, we had like five subscribers in the last month and I really appreciate everybody who like has subscribed. And so that really has made me uh, super happy. Literally just potato flour. Huh. So. Just dehydrated potato. Yeah. Ingredient, potato. Potato, precious. So I need two tablespoons of sugar. Um, you know, that's, it's a little bit more than normal, but you want it to balance out with some of the richness that's gonna go in there. So it's gonna... And the bread's not sweet. No, not at all. It's not gonna be a sweet bread, so. Um, so we need instant yeast. We need one. This is why you wanna get you set of these measuring um, spoons that has a three quarter tablespoon on it. Is that not standard? No. That's why I bought this, partic this particular set of uh, measuring cups and me this measuring spoons because the they have a an increased amount of steps on here. Nope, sizes. There you go. And uh, meant, though they like step up. Yeah, and then so so does this. So like this has this is a cup and then there's a three quarter cup, a two thirds cup, a half cup, one third, one quarter, and it's no one eighth, but so one teaspoon of of, of diamond kosher salt. You can use other salts, but you're gonna to wanna to play with the amount to get the right flavor so it's not too salted. You can use like um, Morton's like uh, uh, kosher salt and that's kind of, but I, it's gonna be less. So you probably need to use a little bit more. And this is a quarter of that as well. So I've got two large eggs. Now here's the other thing where you're gonna, this is what I'm adding the milk and the water at the end here, I'll tell you why. Because I don't know if you know this about eggs, but they are inconsistent, that is correct. Um, you can have one egg that doesn't have a ton of, of extra liquid outside of the, the white, I guess is what it is, outside of that, outside of the yolk. So you're gonna need to watch this. So this is why, use your brain. You wanna make sure that you understand how this works in terms of like, I've got this, I need half a cup or a little bit more. I always go just a, you know, maybe a tablespoon more. And then I'm gonna have water and I want this water to be warmer, about 95 to 110, no more than 110 or you'll cook your yeast. But it's going into coldish milk, so you can get away with a little bit. Are you going for a cup? About a cup, a little bit more, because I, I always like to play around with it. And just in the last few days, because it's been drier around <clears> here, <throat> as incident by Amy sleeping in gloves. Lotion hands and gloves. Listen, Listen it's like... My knuckles were starting to crack. Okay. So the other thing that you're probably noticing is how much we are, like everything just goes in the pot. That's the other good That's thing about nice. this recipe. So, so, but there is an additional kind of step that allows us to, again, play with this to understand what your wetness to, of the dough looks like. We want the hydration level up, but we don't want it so much that it's unhandleable. So, I had to make myself notes about <laughs> when to start things because when you're preparing five loaves of bread that you want to be done and ready at a certain number, of, a certain hour, or no, a certain minute of an hour of a show you're trying to do, you need to have that laid out. And I, my brain doesn't work. 
So we're gonna we're at step one, which is explain kneading the loaf, and then well, actually we're doing the pre knead. This is just a quick mix. It's too hot. There we go. Okay. All I'm looking for is this to come together. It's really, you'll look at it and you go, that's too wet. It's never going to come together. And kind of, you're kind of right. Now I got this big boy. This is my commercial mixer that I got as a present to myself when we moved into this house. I have it sitting on a silicone mat because it likes to dance. It does a little boogie. And it boogied its way off the countertop and had to, he's got a chunk out of his head. I, sh I should have gotten my phone. <laughs> That's right, I forgot. We kn I, I ate uh, grocery store brand white bread for 18 years and beyond. I think I was fine. I mean, a little bit. So now I, it's... I literally was... We did not have white bread at my house. Yeah. We had, like, hearty wheat breads or sourdough. Yeah. Those are your choices. Well, you probably had better uh, fiber intake than I did. <laughs> okay. Have I told you about my father and the tablespoon of bran? Yeah. 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 That's Every not... morning, my father would eat, just just scoop out a tablespoon of bran out of a canister and swallow it down. So this has this. I have sourdough. Sourdough every day. It sounds <laughs> sourdough every day. So this is my sourdough. This guy, his name is, uh, what do we call him? Kevin, right, Denise? Frank, that's right, because he reeks. He does? In the best possible way. <laughs> that smells real good. So, we'll smells like beer. Smells like beer. So we've got, this has got to do its thing. Now, what, you know, while we're doing that, I think we're going to skip. How can we put a towel over uh, it? It helps. <laughs> Well, that's, I mean, kind of, but it also helps. Uh, I want the, all those moisture to hang out. Gotcha. So I don't want it to evaporate. So we're going to make a cocktail real quick. It's only a few minutes in, but we're going to do it anyways because we have a little bit of time. So, and this will be done in about eight minutes, not eight minutes. We have to turn it in eight minutes. So this is a bourbon cocktail. It's called the Honey Bee, the Bourbon Honey Bee. The bourbon bee. The bourbon bee. Bourbon bee. So, uh, yeah, I've got a cocktail shaker as always. How have you guys been? Was it, you know, was it a crazy week for anybody else? We got a lot of work done at Denise's house. We put floors into the kitchen because she got cabinets. That's exciting. Yeah. She has, Super exciting. Um, they put a microwave in. So that she doesn't know how to use, but that's, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's got weepy. So we were trying to play with the buttons and the display just kept saying food, food, food. And we we're like, yeah, food. We want you to heat up food. And it like wouldn't do anything. And then Doug comes along and opens the door and shuts it. And then it works just fine. And it was reminding us to put the food in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure that's smarter because I, I mean, unless you're testing it. No problem. I've never forgotten to put the food in the microwave. True that. Don't worry, Neil. I, one of these loaves of bread is for you. So thanks for <laughs> watching for as long as you did. It's not going to really count towards analytics, but whatever. No, just, kidding. <laughs> just kidding. All right. Um, let's do bullet. Two ounces of this. So then, like, everything's going to go, go, go. Water heater tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Appliances, so they come to measure for the countertops. Internet Monday. Internet Monday. Wow. Measurement Tuesday, Wednesday, my stuff gets moved back in. 
Yeah, yeah, the stuff that's in the containers on her front, uh, on her driveway. Yeah. And don't worry. I can't believe that the appliances will be there Friday. That's so fast. That is fast. Well, the microwave guy called me seriously 10 minutes after I put in the order. Yeah. Awesome. This is a half uh, ounce of uh, lemon juice. Um, but we found the box of rocks that the movers yeah. packed up. <laughs> that literally says box of rocks. Yeah. I can't wait to see that. And this is an ounce of honey syrup. It's just literally honey and hot water. Dissolve the honey. And then that's what you get. Actually, oh, man, that smells really good. The nice part about it is like you... It really, it's really floral. Like I can smell like cinnamon and like. Oh, because of the good honey. Yeah. So it matters your ingredients. Uh, it does. Uh, oh, I need bitters. That would be good to just um, stick in uh, like tea. Oh yeah, I think so. One. That didn't seem right. <laughs> Got a little bit of that, uh, like stuff that mustard comes up first. I don't know. I guess this, they're just yellow. I guess it's just clear. I really thought they were none. No, that smells good. Yeah, yeah. because a lot of times it's, it's because it probably comes from yeah region. It's probably the region you're in has yeah. oranges. All right. Florida honey. Like here they have like wildflower honey. Forest honey. Clover honey. Yeah. Ooh. Did one of the dogs poop, poop their pants? <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I hope there's not poop in here. Oh, that smells really, really good. Yeah. We live a charmed life. Yeah, we do. I think you're going to like that. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's like a pear drink. We could have used the pear syrup, too, if you really wanted to. Oh, that's tasty. So it's versatile, because you could add other things in there, like... A little pear syrup and some pear slice, or yeah. Um, what else is going on? I mean, we kind of each of us had a, a day this week that we all felt that we were like, Bleh. Wednesday was my day, uh, Thursday evening was Amy's day of like, not today, Satan. And um, I think I was, right. was that Thursday evening? What happened Thursday evening? We that's when I got Chinese. I mean, I think like it's just, you know, that transitional season right now that, is. that is, I, I mean, I feel good when I'm outside and it's getting warmer for sure. You can definitely feel it. We have stuff popping up like the chives and the garlic and all that's kind of up right now. And that's super hopeful. And I cut back, I overwintered jalapenos this year. And the plants were, I mean, like this tall. And I cut them back, which is what you're supposed to do. I didn't realize that. I just kept them whole. <laughs> so I cut them back, and they're supposed to, like, they should start kind of going crazy. Oh, I was uh, also just haphazardly researching. But nasturtiums, yep. they really like to climb up walls. They do. And they're a fast grower. Yeah, I'm gonna. That's what is gonna go on the oh, rock perfect. wall, and I'm oh. gonna do some black eyed susans to mix in with it as well. Oh, did you already tell me that? I think so. We discussed it. I think you did. And you know what I thought? I wasn't thinking. You were thinking marigolds. I was. I, and I was like, why do you want to surround the whole patio with something that smells like cat pee? What? I mean, it, it's 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 a really good anti pest. You plant them around yeah, your garden. Yeah, because they stink. Yeah. Well. Um, been, I've been doing a lot of streaming, not my own streaming, for the eSports club. We're working on 
getting a streaming team together, but they have a lot of competitive matches right now. Uh, our Valorant team has four matches next week. So one What's the game? Valorant. And we have one tomorrow at um, 3 p.m. So. I hustled for you on the um, Vegas flight. Try to recruit a kid. Oh. He'd already visited UNR. He was actually headed back down to Vegas with his dad. But um, uh, Oh, my God. That is super tasty. Yeah. Wow. Like, I'm actually... Yeah. It's really complex. I like it a lot. I didn't tell you about that weird thing. No, you did not. So, uh... <laughs> oh, can you pan the camera over here? Yeah. You so, guys don't just want to hear about my weird thing? So this, actually see what we're doing? All right. So this All right. is part of... Why is this guy so far forward? That's weird. We had to get into the fridge. Oh. So this happens sometimes where one side, and it happened with the one I already baked, just kind of doesn't uh, detach at this uh, it's perfectly eatable edible that's what i said so another 20 minutes and then we'll sh i mean look we're 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 killing it right now yeah. um tell me your story now okay so when i first sat maybe i did tell this when i first sat down there was what appeared to be a son sitting next to the window and a father sitting next to him in the center see which is odd so i said is it okay if i sit here and they said yeah and so i sat there and you know we we weren't really chatting or anything and then uh people were loading 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 and then it got like towards the very end and he and i wasn't even listening to the announcement he goes oh that's me i gotta get up and i was like oh, that's, what i do remember this now and he says uh I'm a pilot. I got to go up there. And I was like, uh, uh, no. And he was like, no, I'm serious. I'm, the, I'm a pilot. <laughs> He's like, I'm not the pilot, but I'm a pilot. And I'm going to go, I'm going to be a observer today. And I'm going to fly in the jump seat. And I was like, are you serious? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. So I let him up and sure enough, he, he really was. And then. He invited the architect to take a seat, and that's why I ended up talking to the architect. But true that. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a loaf in this one, and I'll, the reason why is that you can. What's happening? A bird pooped a jalapeno seed in our garden one year, and it grew these bright orange things that were no bigger than a sharpened part of a pencil. I passed because hot wasn't my thing at a time. I wonder. So. I have grown um, Tabasco peppers that are like maybe this big. Mm -hmm. So it could, it's, there's all sorts of different ones out there, but. I would be wary of something so small in a pepper. It's probably quite hot. I would imagine. So like I said, unfortunately, we're gonna jump around here, but we're gonna do right now is we're going to roll this loaf that, or this, bread that is behind me and is ready and then because really all we're doing and, and the really the demonstration i need to show you here is the window pane test and that's how you're going to see how much gluten is developed and that's a really good thing about this recipe is that, again it has structure to it so all right blah, 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 blah. this is also called auto lease um in sourdough you do the water and the flour together and let it kind of hang out. Uh, oh, and the, and the sourdough. And then you add the, if you're doing a yeasted bread, you would add it, the yeast and the salt at that point, and then go. That's for, for hydration. Yeah. yeah. And that's the same thing I'm kind of doing here, is letting everything get hydrated. So we've got about five more minutes on that, but we do have one that is already good. And this is what I'm talking about with gluten structure. That is exactly what you want. So I'm covering, I'm gonna just, this is one of the, it's got a lot of structure to it, but at the same time, I can do a lot, I can, you know, I can feel that it's a strong dough. Can you see anything that's Yes, happening? we can. Okay. We'll back a little. Okay. If you just, yeah, we're good. Okay. Well, the, oh. Where's that rolling pin? I don't know. Oh, oh, I found it. I know mine. 
Okay, so this is the it? this is the biggest rolling pin I've ever found. And then we have Tata Rolling Pin <laughs> to go along with our good friend Tiny Whisk. <laughs> Look at this thing. It doesn't even roll in here. It's just for de decor. Sorry, everybody. But that got exciting. It's super fun. Oh, yeah, there's. We'll have Tiny Whisk in our pocket just so we can hang out. <laughs> so. This part is kind of important because you want to make sure that you are pressing down to get all the bubbles out of it, and, and you're going to get most of it out. The reason you want that is because a lot of, um, I don't want a loose, as they say, crumb. I would like a tighter crumb. And then, so that's what we got going on here. And you're going to. See, because the loose crumb is what rips all the hell, or it just it, it it's bigger pockets, and I don't want big pockets. Oh yeah, okay. So you know, like sourdough bread has a loose crumb, they say, like oh, where okay. it has the crooks and the crags, and but oh. it's also the but it's a tough. But sourdough bread is is definitely more. Um, the gluten, is, the development, is, so you cook it a little longer, so the gluten and the, the, the crumb is like softer, or harder a little bit. Not harder, but it's not the right word, but you know. Okay, so I'm just, so what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing it from this end. I've got it approximately the size of this thing. And I've rolled it out to a certain thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and roll this as tightly as possible. And the reason that we're doing this is because this structure is really good for low, bread loaves. Now you can do, if you're, again, if you're making sourdough, you can do that. And I'm pinching and kind of tucking as we're going. And what we're going to have here at the end is this seam. And we don't want that seam. So what we're going to do on the end here, and this is also going to allow us to check everything. Are we good? And we're just going to tighten. And we're going to pull. We're going to pull. We're going to do this until... Because if you leave that seam, will it just like... Un it can't. <laughs> so what you're going to do when we put it in there, and you can see it got a little bigger than I wanted it to, so we're going to have to, you know, do a little... But I'm going to... But you can do that. It's forgiving. Oh, it's super forgiving. Like, this is the nice part about this loaf, if you ask me, is I'm just giving a little roll. That's also going to help. And then we need our good friend, Pam... And she's going to help us be lubricated. Think of her like a bartender. Ooh, uh, Teresa, what is for breakfast tomorrow? Yeah, seriously, what's for breakfast? We'll be over at like uh, 10, 30, 11. I can be over earlier. No, that's not if true. If there's coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an art. So I'm... This is also... A good time to look at your bread and say, do I have big gas? And I'm just making my buddy here, and I'm looking for bubbles. Is my buddy, Doe, Doug with an H, um, there's a, isn't that place in Portland called Doug H. Nuts? Yes. Yeah. And we, and we have your <laughs> head in there. That's right. So... This is basically what you're looking for. You want it to be inside of there nice and tight. And then I've already got a pre-lubed piece of plastic. And he goes there. Okay, now. Don't worry about him. He's important in a little bit. This is at a state that is hydrated. And there's a little bit of gluten developed that has happened. What I have here is five tablespoons of softened room temperature butter, okay? So I'm gonna turn this on to about, um, medium is a five, and that's where I'm gonna go. But right now, I only want it here because I need to add a little bit of butter at a time. And this is where the, the technique is, where the brioche technique comes in. This is a very similar methodology to adding 
for brioche that you add the butter once at a time, let it incorporate. And what you're gonna get is a nice, you're gonna see a difference. I don't know if you can see in there or anything, but. So you're gonna, right, it's already looks better. What it looked like is really craggly. It looks, I could move my phone. Oh, wait. So right now, it also looks really sticky, right? And so I add another one of those guys, those guyses. And it's super soft. So it's going to disappear in there pretty quick. What are you guys making with that breakfast? breakfast? Ooh, we should make French toast. I mean, we could. That's just Get more work for me. Out of the way. If, you, if we haven't said it. We can't see your face. If we haven't said it, <laughs> Teresa has moved into our neighborhood. So they're like our, they're only, they only live six houses away now. Five actual houses between us plus their own house. So in bread, in the sourdough or some other, you can add a um, oil or butter, which is partially oil. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm making sure that we get everything. You'll see what. Okay. The problem with bread is that you wanna, you wanna eat it now, but you gotta wait. So here's the deal. Turn that up, and this has about 10 minutes to do its thing which is in, coincidentally 10 minutes of what we got left here, which is great. But what we have here is, this is what's gonna happen with that one. It's gonna get very puffy and beautiful. I'm very excited about this. You do not want to go much higher than here. Yes, Amy? Well, Pink says his favorite part of the sour toe is that glassy, blistery crust. I heard you can achieve that with a cornstarch and water base. Have you ever done that? I have never done that, but also you're cooking sourdough at such a high heat that the outside bubbles, and that's where you get that crispiness of it. That, that crusty comes from it. It's like, if you've made sourdough at home, which one of the things that's interesting, whoops, my thing's coming undone, um, is that when it's cooling, you can hear this because it, the, it's condensing um, as it cools and that there's um, the steam is still releasing from the inside. You can hear the outside, which is hard, oh. crackling, and it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful sack. So. Do have an E at the end? B R I O C H E. Yeah. The reason why this is, would make a good French toast is because it's brioche like. Get out of my head. Did you read my comment? No. See? I know. That's what we're going to make tomorrow. I made this bread because, as you saw earlier, we had uh, somebody in the room called Bread Consumer. That's Neil. Neil is the vice president of the eSports club. And his his name on a lot of the things is bread. <laughs> and so, and he's a super cool dude that's really nice and like just deserves to have something nice. And so I baked, baked him one and he just like was thanking me upside. And then he took it home and he and his roommates ate the whole loaf of bread in one day. And he said to me, and then the other, yesterday, no, Thursday, we were tabling for the club, and tabling is where you sit there with all your information, and people come up, and you try and sign them up for the club. Anyways, and his roommate, who also had some of the bread, came up and was like, wait, are you the guy who made the bread? And I was like, I am. And he, and he shook my hand, and he said, it's the best loaf of bread, he's had, the best bread he's ever had, which is a wonderful comment. I'm going to see that something. 
Hold on. I'm going to see if I can pull up Doug Cam that you can. Aha. Can I switch to it? We'll see if it still works. Start. Reverse. Reverse. Nope, that's, that's my face. Like okay. okay. Oh, that looks very creamy. Yes. Yeah. Now, now, you can, you can see, see. Sorry, let me back up. Actually, is this better? This better? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. You can, you see, can here. see here. I'm going to turn the I'm microphone off. Microphone. You can see here that. <laughs> what? This is what you're going to say. Sorry. You can see here that right now it looks really wet and it's sticking to the sides. That's because the gluten development has not really happened quite yet. Okay? We have about six minutes left, and I'm telling you, by the time it gets done, it'll start to pull away from the sides and the bottom. And. Huh? I forgot we could do this. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. So I just got it up here. Okay, but so let's go back to, we'll go back to regular and then... I'm going to leave it as is. And then we'll go back there when it's like towards the very end, yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. What about your little loaf there? You don't have to do anything to that? Well, is that ready? It will, yes. When this comes out, this one goes in. And so you said a higher, where you go? You said a higher um, temperature for sourdough. This is cooking at 400. What does sourdough cook at? 450. Well, I cook sourdough. I start at 500 and then to get everything nice and hot. I turn the oven on almost an hour beforehand, too because you want it to be nice, everything to be warmed up in there because you want radiant heat, you want everything. And then, and then I turn it down to 450. I have a, I have a cast iron frying pan that I put a cast iron pot on, a cr you know, um, like a Le, Le, Le Creuset or one of the ones we have, the big one. There we go. And then I put that on top. The reason I don't put it inside the Dutch oven is because A, I inevitably burn my hands putting it in. A technique to do that, not do that, is to just have it on parchment paper and then lower it in. But then I don't really like that. I don't know why. It just bothers me. So I do it this way and it works well, fine. Does that make like weird creases and stuff on the outside? That's why you don't like it. You like that little yeah. perfect load. Yeah, I do. Well. The thing that we want is with that is then it goes in. And so there's a, most sourdoughs are 75 to 85% moisture. They're very, very uh, like wet dough. And so what's gonna happen is at that high temperature, basically all that water that's in there is gonna go and turn to steam, which in turn is gonna make the bread go like a balloon. And the gluten development that happens in that is what traps that in case. And then the outside with that high temperature is, is basically baking, keeping it at a certain size. And it will do that. It, I don't know, man. I don't know how it works. I just know science and bread. And people have been doing it for a million years, and that's it. And then, they, and then what happens then, so then that higher heat is what you want because of the moisture content. So it also makes sense that I know part of it has to do with your sourdough starter that gives some of the flavor, but it also, because it has such high water content, it makes sense that, especially in coastal places, it seems like the sourdough is way better in coastal places. 100%, which is why, has more, it's why you know, I put a pan of water in the bottom of this, which I should have mentioned, so that if that is steaming, helping that rise here. Yeah. How's that looking in the blender? Should we look at it again? Bread Science 301. <laughs> oh, so that's coming off the edge of a lot more. Yes. yes. We've got, We've about, got about two minutes. minutes. 
So you so can, you see, can see, like... like It's going to be amazing. When this, when this is, is done, done and you can also, also see that, that the, the, the mixer, mixer is, dancing. is dancing. I'm coming back to you. We're on you now. Oh. Yeah, the mixer is dancing, and uh, you even bought a special mat for it. Oh, did you type tightening that thing? There's a thing you can type. Maybe. I don't Might know. Might help. I don't know. So, you didn't cut up. Yeah, that's it. Well, it's one of the things we were talking about. So, I don't think a wet tea towel is going to be any more effective than that non mat. I also don't think so. So this is still clinging. 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 Yeah. Is that what I said? Yeah. Okay. But we're gonna we're gonna let it. We got ten seconds, and we're gonna. I'll show you what we're gonna do here. It's a good word. I wasn't repeating it to correct it. No, I was wondering if you needed clarification. <laughs> okay. That this was... is still clinging. So this guy needs Ooh, to la, come la, out. La, la. <gasps> Ta -da. Oh my God! It smells divine in it here does. okay now you're gonna look at this and you're gonna go why is it so brown in the top doug and you're gonna go i'm gonna say to you well dear viewer the reason <laughs> it is so brown on the top is because of the milk milk has milk solids and milk solids get brown does that need more water in the pan nope there's plenty so i see the little plant yeah, they're just a little pan. So I'm gonna move this guy off to the side. You see how it sinks Wait, I in? That's the guy you're... Oh, I am. Good. You see the guy how it sinks in on the side sometimes? I, I, I'm not sure how to prevent that yet, but I'm gonna work on it. I need this. So this is gonna be hot. So I'm gonna see how that just. Oh my gosh! That just slipped right out of there. That's our good friend Pam, everybody. What if you let it? Cool in a warmer space. Could Would be. that prevent the the side sinking? I also am going to do this move, which I've done before. And um, the reason I'm doing this is because there's not as much weight, and the top the top yeah. is more uh, sturdy. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that this. I, I mean, I'm not sure this is a real solution, but this is a Doug solution. So you know what? How do you pronounce that? Is it Maillard? The Maillard reaction. Maillard. It's French. So yeah, and, but it's because of the the milk solids that are in there that gotcha. that brown. So so this is going. You need to let. I I know, folks. I know that you're like, you're gonna take this out of the oven. Wonder if it's from stuffing it into the pan when it's too long. To break the sagging. It might be. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I've done it multiple different ways, but I think this is part of it. But like, we're gonna watch it. But what this, you're, you dear listener and reader and, <laughs> and viewer and whatever, are one, you're gonna wanna cut into this right now and butter it with bread. Don't. And it's gonna make your life a living hell to have to wait. <laughs> but you need to do so. Okay. Because? Because if you don't, it's not, I mean, it's done. It's done cooking. Here's how you know it's done cooking. I think it's kind of like a steak. If you cut it too soon and all the juice flows out of it. It is. If you cut the bread too soon, then all that good steam just goes right out. It does. So here's, you it. want, here's your, here's your temperature taker, your thermometer as it would be. And what do you want this to be? You're going to be like, Doug, what do you want this to be? I'm at 197 degrees, but do you know what I want? 195. So I know this is done on the inside. Oh, okay. That yeah. is trial and error. Now, the original part of the recipe... What temperature can it be for you to cut? Uh, it could be this temperature, but we need to check <laughs> this guy right here. So I'm going to take a little chunk of this boy. Ooh. Yeah, this is going to be good. You guys are going to like this. This <laughs> is... Ooh. Okay. So we are gonna do what's called the window pane test. Why, Amy, do we wanna do the window pane test? Do you know? To see if the gluten's on That is correct. 
you are going to want to pull this so that I got a little bit of there. It might need to go a little bit further, but I also didn't pull it. This is what you're looking for. See how that is? If I can see light, even if it pulls a little bit, so I know that it's good, that is... I mean, that's like at least a four by four section. Yeah, that is it, it, folks. We did it. So we can take our friend, the dough hook out, and our mixer. I don't know. I haven't named him or her or whatever. I don't know. I, I name everything. Ray can make you a little iron sticker. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to boink. And we're going to see it's oh, sticky. I'd like to be able to see inside of it. Oh, you're going to be able to see it's it gonna in a sec. It's, it's going to be amazing. Can't see. Oh my God, we're we're killing it, folks. We are. You did a great job. Okay. Wait, tip it so we can see. See the see the she glossy sheen on it too. Yes. That is part. Of, that's where the brioche side of this is going to come into play. Now, I'm not kidding. I'm super proud of this because again, I took what I knew about bread from multiple sources, and I never, I tried a brioche loaf and I didn't like the texture. It wasn't good enough. So I tried a milk bread. It's good, but it's not what I, it didn't have the structure I was looking for. I tried a copycat recipe of Wonder Bread. I tried this, I tried this, I tried this. I found, the closest I found was like this New England hot dog bun recipe that's basically yeah. like that, right? And we use that for this. And this is what I still use it for too, but I modified it. I make sandwich rolls with this. I make hamburger buns with this. All of them. Hot dog buns. Exactly. They're just, it's a versatile bun. Ooh, that's good, Denise. I need to show that next. Can but, you make, um, I was wondering, can you make cinnamon rolls out of this? Probably. I mean, just add, you probably need to add more sugar to get it more but sweet. What if you just, no, I like it not so sweet. And the sweetness comes from the goo they put on there. Could be. So, if you have a restaurant supply company in your town, which we do, we have Resco, go there and buy things because they're, they are priced for wholesale and for restaurants. People buy them in bulk. This is a dough scraper. Now, this is also a dough scraper. Now, this is, this is useless. Look at this edge. Then get rid you, of it. You slip. I am going to. I saved it specifically for this demonstration. <laughs> it has a hard edge. It should start right there. Uh, but this is useless. So I end up using this corner, which I don't want to use. It must have some other purpose. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. smoothing out. Uh, it came with something I got. Smoothing out. Oh, you know what it came with? It came with that um, the proofing. Icing. Oh, it could be. You could do that too. The reason I want this is this is harder plastic, but it is flexible. And the reason that's going to be important is I need to scrape down the sides of this and I need to get this sticky ass dough out of here. Okay. There's only one way to find out, Amy. Yeah, that will make. Actually, I don't want that. We'll use the guy we have. Listen. Yeah, like, because well, well, because it makes good buns. Ooh, we're on to something now. Can you pause bread like this? I mean, like, can you be like, we got yes. to this okay. stage, yes. and now that's we're not going to use it until tomorrow. It's great, great observation. What did we do with the first loaf? That loaf. We did that yesterday. We decided to go to Denise's house. I'd already started the bread. You can do what's called a cold fermentation for a day, 24, up to 24 hours. And it's as just, long as you're to this point? Yes. Okay, okay. Cool. So see. So that's why I want you to do that. Look at this. That's, that is the gluten that we're is talking about. That is thing, that thing's oiled? It is. And so I'm getting just getting the rest because, we again, like everything, we spent a long time doing this, so we want to make sure we get everything out of it. Okay. And that goes in there. Mix it together, and I'm going to push this, and then I'm going to do this fun move. Boop. And this dough is exactly what I want. It is. It's got structure to it, 
but it's soft. It's still a teeny bit sticky to your hands. That's what you want. You want to make sure that your bread, the especially in an application for, for bread, sandwich bread, excuse me, you want it to be like this. Because again, this, I feel like people think their bread is too wet. Their dough is too wet. And so they, they, they add more flour. And their bread is too dry. And it's, it's, it becomes too dense what is ended up. And you get this, you get a dry, like really dense, almost like banana bread type bread because there's no, it doesn't get as much of a stretch because the gluten's there, but it's not as, you know, you want, this is what you want, okay? <laughs> All right. All right, everybody got that? Now, when you- Is that salted butter? Why would you bury the lead? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should be putting no non-salted butter on my bread. You do not listen, <laughs> folks. Butter and bread sustained man for thousands of years. My grandmother, Amy's grandmother, <laughs> if you're hungry, why don't you have some butter and bread? And at the time, I'm a child, and Amy's a child. We both, this is another bonding thing that we talk about. It's like, no, I don't want, I don't want buttered bread. And then, you no, have, as an adult, you have <laughs> buttered bread. We made, I made a pulled pork, like a nine hour pulled pork on the smoker. We sat around the kitchen table, and literally with it sitting in a big pan, we just took chunks off of it with a loaf of bread like this, Cut pieces of it. I thought we were very European. Yes. <laughs> Spread. Hi, Deefy. Um, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's my fault. Um, but anyways, we loved it. It was so good. So let's, let's check this bad boy out. Yeah. Now, you could use this, too. Yeah. If you I have If you have this guy which is for slicing bread. You need to... Oh, yeah. We did it. We nailed it. Yeah. It's a little... Now, listen, not is all... Is it still warm? It's a little bit. Is that bad? No. This is okay. No, it's a little bit... No, don't, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> I want you to take a look at that. That is sandwich bread, okay? You want some, some pockets. You want it. To hold the meal and mustard. Exactly. And you want to be able to press on it. But the best part about this bread is instead of it staying all the way down, it returns because it has enough structure to it because of the gluten that we built into it. That, my friends, I'm a judge of bread by its crumb. That's right. We killed it. I'm just, I'm just telling you right now. Now, are you sure that salted butter? I'm a hun. Well, I don't know. It's got bread. It's got you crumbs. Almost said I'm a hundred percent, but you didn't taste it. No, I didn't. And I'll taste this, and then you'll. If it's not, I'll get you. I'll have to soften some bread or b butter. So are you. But it has. Yes, but, Doug really loves to bake bread. It's. I, I think of the things that I do. I'm pretty good at a few things. Cooking, I'm pretty good at. But baking bread, I'm getting pretty masterful at. Yeah, fucking nailed it. <laughs> God, it's so good. The flavor is off the charts. I'm... I'm like, do you want to know why I started this journey? <laughs> the reason I started this journey is, yeah, yeah, I will do that just for you. Also, you know what this makes the best you're ever going to have? Toast. It's so good. Now... I started this journey. We'll go back to that conversation. Because 
I used to eat those uh, Uncrustables, right? And I, look, they're bad for you. They're made with the most worst bread ever and probably the most sugary peanut, peanut butter, butter in the ever. jelly? Yeah, but I didn't really care. And so, um, every time it makes me so happy. <laughs> Um, we, you know, it's a thing in which I was like, I can, I can, I can make this. This is the whole reason I got into baking bread in the beginning. I said to myself, listen, bread has been around for, you know, thousands of years. And those people didn't have the internet. And if those people, geniuses that they were of their time, could make bread, a dear old Doug could make bread too. And let me tell you, folks, it's been a journey because I, this is the culmination of that journey. A, I, when you make a sandwich with this bread, I mean, listen, I get no complaints from Denise or Amy when I make a sandwich out of it. Now, this pan over here, because it's, this is a rate, this is what a size of bread should look like. This is going to make a giant slice of bread. So if you really want a big sandwich, you can have it. Gus thinks that he needs a big sandwich too, but. What did you just do? Mm. I put butter on here, and now I put some cinnamon sugar on there. Has <laughs> mm. your good friend Lino got you that? That's true. And let's talk about Lino. Today is March 9th. And on March 9th, Lino Di Michelli, it's his birthday. It's the day of his birth. And he's old. He's 54 years old. <laughs> he's an old man, but he's the best, one of the best. <laughs> They're in Margaritaville, where? In Tahoe. Oh, well. He's in Margaritaville in Tahoe now. I forgot about that. I hope you're having a wonderful birthday. We love you very much, Lino, even though you and I yell at each other a lot. <laughs> but yeah. So there you go. What number did he just say? 54. Yeah, five four. Don't worry. I'm just kidding. If you're, but what size, oh, uh, what size pans are you using there? And what? can I have some of that cinnamon sugar bread? Oh, that was ri that's so rude. Yeah, that is a rudy poo. <laughs> so I believe this one. I'm even gonna give you the big piece, Denise. Unlike shove it all in his mouth, Magoo. There. I think this is thirteen by four. Uh, now you have butter in the corner of your mouth like a slob. Not anymore. <laughs> we have to have some words. I'm forty six, so <laughs> young lady. <laughs> I am getting there. And I'll tell you how I know I'm getting old, because today. Wait, did you finish talking about the size of bread? Yeah. Oh, that's eleven by f or thirteen by four, I believe. And this is nine by five. I think the nine, 13 by four is what you want. And here's the other deal. Today, we're in the car. Don't we're be pointing up and at people. When we were going somewhere, because we have a little bit of time <coughs> before we do the outro. I said to Amy, listen, you don't want to get on my list of grievances. We went to an estate sale. So... We, oh, I got them at Resco, which is a restaurant supply co in our, in our town. So if you have one, you should go there and get it. But I, I, we were at an estate sale in these three inch by four inch memo books. <laughs> Thank you. We're in there. And so now this is, this is my book of grievances. And you don't want me to pull this out and put your name in it. So I've also decided there's another one that I'm going to try and put the book of, uh, called the book of joy. And I'm hoping Good. that at the end of a week, <laughs> list of grievances you're old with. <laughs> yes. No. Just put that right on. The and if I have, my goal <laughs> is to have more entries in the book of joy than in the book of grievances. I, that's a great goal. And I think that that. Look how cute that little book is. Show it again. It's a they're the Aww. best. I think it's amazing. They're so funny. This is a blue jay. All right. Well. Oh, she saw a bunch of those little ones. And they have bears on them. 
he almost got them. Well, you could have had DP's list of grievances and or DP's list of joys. You should try. You should go back and get them if you can. So, Tiger that's it. And the joy. That's it. We're over. It's over. We did it. I'm, I will say it again. I will fight anybody who says that this isn't a perfect loaf of bread. Now, the shape, it is what it is. Um, well, bread's unpredictable, but... But it is a bread shaped, and this side is just, you know... What you do is, when I make a sandwich, I, I just flip it so that they, you know, come back together. So we're done. Uh, let's, oh, before we go, let's take a look at this and see if we have any sunken sides, or did my theory work? Ooh, pretty good! Wait, oh, sorry, I wasn't looking at you. See how it's not I, sunken? My face was looking at you, but the camera was not... <laughs> Try again. So this is. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, and so your theory might work. Upside down cooling. Yeah. So here's the other thing we found um, at this estate sale, which I uh, obfuscated with. We were gonna sell it, but like, it's a bar finished. set. Look at this. I mean, it's like a what? Are, so what are those two little dishes for? I think they're for olives. We think yeah, olives oh. or other things that go in it, and this is and it, it pops out. Yeah. What? This is amazing. I love it. And it's, oh, and here's like an old school juicer. We think so, right? Yes. Yeah. And a church key. Yeah, very useful. That's what we need. This, what is this? Do we know? Cut your lemons or to pick olives out of the barrel. We're in. All right. <laughs> we did it. I made the perfect loaf of bread again. And I've got so many more coming. So I will put this, um, I will update the description of this video with the actual recipe. Really? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Tonight? Yeah, I'm going to do it like immediately. And um, the reason is because I want you to make it. I don't know where the other one is. Oh, okay, that's fine. What are you looking for? The other one of these. Okay, see? Okay, this is good. This is good. This is actually, can you pan over here real quick? Yes. Look. I can. Ooh. That is on both yeah, sides. Yeah, it's a big top on both sides. Big time. So now. 20 more minutes? 20 more minutes. And this is, and then he's going to brown up real nice and come out. 40 minutes is exactly what you want because you get the 195. So I'll put this up. Make sure you, if you haven't liked this video right now, go do it right now. Subscribe if you haven't. And again, again, all the new subscribers, the five that we got this last month, I really appreciate you guys subscribing because, you know, we're at 186, I think, right now, which is great. And, uh, you know, we, I'd like to make a push for 200. That would be a nice milestone, except, especially because we have, we're at 184 episodes. We're at 186 viewer, uh, subscribers. We're going to be coming up, I believe, right around the time that our anniversary is for four years of doing this, four whole years, is probably close to our 200th episode. So we need to, if you have ideas for what we should do for this 200th episode, we could do a retrospective. We could do, I don't know, we could do something. But we should look into it. But until then, I adore you. You guys are the best part of, one of the best parts of doing this. And I think, like, we continue to do it because we have you. So, thank you. And remember, next week, you're going to do something kind for somebody. You're going to be loyal to somebody and do something nice as well. We love you. We'll see you next Saturday. Take care.